Thank you, Gay French, and thank you, Steve. And uh, we uh, thank Steve and Blake Shoemaker for the technical equipment being used, and uh, Steve for the operating thereof. And we welcome you to this service of God's praise and uh, studying and proclaiming the word with us here today at First Christian Church. Would you bow with me in a spirit of prayer? Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this time, this place, and this opportunity. We know that no matter what troubles us, your goodness, grace, and truth, they encourage us and make it possible to walk forward with faith and hope and love. Please bless all those in the medical sciences. Protect them as they help others, and may those whom they treat recover, and gain strength and wellness. Please empower each one of us with patience and goodwill, helping hands and prayerful hearts. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. A little later uh, in our service this morning, we'll be getting ready to partake of communion, the Lord's Supper. And uh, we will give you uh, a little bit of time as you at home or, or wherever you happen to be as you view this can, uh, can uh, prepare uh, and, and simply so for the Supper of the Lord a little later. We'll tell you and remind you about that. Gay, could you bless us again with song? Thank you. Our scripture for today is from John's Gospel, chapter 20. Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, and we'll be reading verses 19 through 31. I'm using the Revised Standard Version today. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, 
the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jewish leaders, came and stood among them Jesus. And he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hand the print of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not yet seen and yet believe. Our message today is called, Let Me See Your Hands. Let me see your hands. A little boy growing up in a community where his dad was a Baptist minister was outside playing and he was climbing trees and swinging on the swing set and going down the slide. He was picking up ants and caterpillars and toads. His mother called him in for supper and all the family gathered at the table. His mom looked at the little boy and said, young man, let me see your hands. Reluctantly, he held them up for inspection, whereupon his mother said, march to the bathroom right now and scrub those hands with soap and water. The little guy got up from the table, turned to his parents and said, germs and Jesus, germs and Jesus, that's all you two ever talk about and I've never seen either one. hands. Most of us can be identified by our hands, the distinctive fingerprints along with the scars and nicks they've taken along the way. And the same was true for Jesus. On that first Easter day, Peter and John were gathered with the other disciples in the upper room. No doubt they wanted to talk about, they needed to discuss what some of them had experienced that day. Was Jesus risen? What was going on? What did it mean? And as they were talking, Christ himself comes and stands among them. And understandably, they were shocked, even scared. But Jesus reassures them by showing them his hands and feet. How often had his friends seen those very hands compassionately touch someone with God's healing strength? How many times did he tenderly reach out and place his hands in blessing on the head of a little child? When he preached about God's kingdom, how did those hands move and gesture as he spoke? Now they looked upon the Savior's hands and they knew that God had raised him on Easter morning. Two of them, however, were absent that day. Judas was dead, and Thomas wasn't with the others. Maybe he had slipped off alone to grieve his grief, or he might have had some chores to do in order for his friends to have the help and sustenance they needed. Thomas finally catches up with the others, and 
They tell him that Jesus is risen indeed. In fact, they had seen him with their own eyes just a little while before. Well, Thomas doesn't buy it. He doesn't believe. I think he might have said, don't you know your minds are playing tricks on you? You're imagining things. But the others insisted that the Lord had appeared to them in that very room. You remember what Thomas finally said, unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands and put my finger on the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. One week later, Thomas received his proof. All of them were together in the upper room when Jesus again came and stood among them. Personally, the Lord invites Thomas to put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Do not doubt. But the Greek actually says, be believing. Thomas is so overcome and so overwhelmed that all he can do is worship. I imagine that he might have been face down on the floor or at least on his knees when he blurted out, my Lord and my God. Fanny Crosby wrote years and years ago in one of her hymns, I shall know him, I shall know him, and redeemed by his side I shall stand. I shall know him, I shall know him, by the nail prints in his hands. Well, today as we look with Thomas at the hands of our Savior, there are two things at least his hands might tell you and me. For, the, for example, the Savior's hands remind us of his suffering, the extent of his suffering. Most people in our society believe prisoners should receive decent treatment, not torture, not cruelty. However, the Romans of 2,000 years ago would not have agreed with our sentiments. In fact, they worked at making punishment as cruel and painful as possible. An old Bible teacher, Bible scholar remarked, a crucified man died a thousand deaths before he reached his final breath. If we ever doubt that, we do well to remember that his nail ruptured hands and keep in mind, remember the suffering and tell of the agony that he endured. There's a little story by Leslie Flynn about a boy being raised by his grandmother in Frontier, Oklahoma. And one night a lantern fell over and caught grandmother's house on fire. She tried and failed to rescue the little boy from the flames, but he was trapped in a bedroom upstairs. Very sadly, grandmother was overcome. As we mentioned, she did not survive, but now the flames were mounting and a crowd was gathering around the burning house. And the people all heard the child's cries for help, but no one seemed to know what to do until one man pushed his way through the crowd and began to climb up the iron drain pipe up to the little boy's bedroom window. He grabbed the child in a fireman's carry and shinned back down the pipe, pulling the little boy to safety. At a public meeting a week after the house fire, the mayor presided for the purpose of finding a guardian for the little boy who was rescued. One middle-aged man stood up and said that he operated a prosperous farm. He could teach the child how to farm and make sure that he got plenty to eat. The town blacksmith then stood up and began to speak. He could teach the boy a decent trade and make sure that he had a roof over his head and food in his stomach. Others offered to take the child and put him to work somehow. Finally, a young man stood up to address the council. He said, these other people may be able to offer things that I can't. All I can offer is my patience and a caring heart. Then the young man slowly remo removed his hands from his coat pockets and a gasp went up from the crowd because the man's hands were terribly scarred from climbing up and down that hot iron pipe the night he rescued the little boy. 
And the child saw the man and his disfigured hands, and he ran and leapt into his arms. Wounds, scars, proved that he had given more than all the others. His injury spoke understandably, unmistakably, about how much he cared. Dear friends, today there are many things that are vying for our love and attention. No matter who we are, we are tempted to travel on dead-end roads, self-indulgence, ego, materialism. Even the route of laying low and hiding out and doing nothing is a temptation for millions, not only in times of quarantine. But we might remember that walking through the quarters of time, there is one, the one whom we call our Lord and Savior, who only lifts up his riven hands in front of our eyes to show his claim upon us. The claim of astounding love, amazing grace, and untold suffering given to win our hearts and minds. The hands of Jesus speak of his suffering which was invested for you and for me and for a multitude. Second, the hands of the Master tell about the depth of His love, the breadth and depth of His love. And our hands, yours and mine, seek to show love and compassion and sharing through Jesus' tender mercies today. Whenever we bring canned food to help the hungry, Whenever we donate toothbrushes and toothpaste, as we pack health kits to send even to other continents, or fix food for a fellowship dinner, or be happy to write a check so that the mission of God's church will continue and be strengthened and empowered to worship, sing, celebrate, learn, show our love, our hands are thereby used and guided by the Heavenly Father. The wounded hands of the incomparable carpenter remind us that on the cross he poured out his all, all his devotion, his courage, every bit of his commitment, and most of all, his love. If he had had any more to give for our forgiveness, I know that he would have offered it. But he gave every heartbeat, every drop of sweat and blood because of his astounding love for you and me and so many, many more. In light of that amazing grace, I would like you to, you don't have to this minute, but perhaps later today, you might take a look at your own hands. How have your hands been helpful to Jesus? Are they regularly busy for the kingdom of God? Helen Steiner Rice wrote, The record never lies. No, heaven's files record it true. In God's great book of life, it's all there within plain view. The things our hands have turned to. The work our hands have done. The record tells it clearly what we've lost and what we've won. What will the pages say when angels turn to weigh your soul? Have you served our Lord and Savior, or was self your mainmost goal? While we can, let's continue to turn our hands to serving our good and gracious Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Gay, do you have another one this morning for us?
Thank you. As we prepare for the Lord's Supper, we'll give you some time in just a minute to collect uh, elements from your home if you're able to do that today, or perhaps you would be uh, uh, better uh, served in the, in the course of your day to take it later, whatever that you would choose to do. But remind you again that uh, Grape juice, yes, is standard for the Lord's Supper, but if you have some other type of juice in your kitchen, even a saltine cracker would work just fine for the bread. We're going to use those elements today on this video as we prepare to take his supper. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. He gave thanks to God and he broke it and he gave it to those who were with him. And he said, take and eat for this is my body, which is given up for you. They did eat and then he took the cup. He raised it heavenward in blessing and thanks. And he gave it to them saying, take and drink for this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink of this cup, you proclaim my death until I come again. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, as we know through Scripture, he took bread, blessed it, and he broke it. He distributed it to his friends, and he took and ate in memory of what would be his crucified body, and we do so also. And then the cup, the emblem of his blood shed for us and for so many more who had placed their faith in him. We thank the Savior for his presence. We thank him for his living work and involvement in our lives and all throughout the world. We give thanks that we are able to worship in this nation. And we praise God's supply of wonderful people who help us and gather together to do just that. May you be blessed. May the Lord enfold you with health and peace and strength and wellness and touch you, guard you, guide you, help you, and lead you, both today and for the many days to come. Be blessed in Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat>